Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I'm gonna go into a kind of different video from usual. In this video I'm gonna go over the most expensive crafted item in Path of Exile history. The reason why I'm so interested in this item is because I actually own the original base from which this item was made. And hopefully by making a video like this, it will help out like most people to understand the process that it goes into making a mirror item and how the final form sometimes take multiple leagues to finish. Now, this item is of note is of note because it has triple T1 fizz prefix and suffixes of two additional arrows, T1 attack speed and crafted crit chance. But the main reason why the item is so expensive is because of the synthesized mods of 7 to 10 flat fizz, 40% cold damage and bow's fire and additional arrow. So before we get started, you might be wondering what is the most expensive actual item, not crafted item in Path of Exile history. And it's probably an Alt-Art Aziris Mirror. An Alt-Art Aziris Mirror there's probably only 50 of, but most of the people will probably quit the game already and the other people just aren't willing to sell it. So right now there's zero for sale. And if it did go up for sale, it probably cost any, way over 1,000 mirrors. So this item is a small drop in the bucket. Now, this is actually one of the first versions of the bow, so you might wonder why use a bow and why is a bow so desirable? A bow is like one of the pretty much one of the premier skills that people like. People love using bows, so the race to get the number one bow is always quite something. Bows always end up to be one of the most mirrored items, so there's definitely justification in making this item, and yeah, you can see how pleasant a bow's clear speed is and how it's literally is one of the best uh, vessels to use your head hunter or to clear 100% um, to later maps. So in order to do this video I'm gonna go through the whole story so we're gonna start from the very first steps the baby steps. So back in Harvest it introduced synthesized mods which adds one to three random implicits for an item. Now this will lead to items like Dragon Ren synthesized sea jacks. 16% flat fizz or 16% fizz damage, 7 to 10 flat fizz, 8% attack speed. Now this item is pretty much as perfect as it gets in terms of what you would want. Then we would also have quivers like this. Percent fizz damage, multi and bows attacks by an additional arrow. So synthesis leagues really allow some really overpowered items to be made. So we're left with this base. So imagine this item as a white item. All it has are these three implicits. So now we have to go about crafting it. And back then we knew the base was so good that we did not need to go for triple T1 prefix. Now if you look here, triple T1 prefix is the main problem with this bow. In order to get triple T1 prefixes, it would take 697 million chaos orbs. And if you wanted to use Jagged Fossils, which was the only other way to really craft these items before Harvest existed, it would take 19 million Chaos worth of Jagged Fossils, or 7 million Jagged Fossils. And this is with Triple T1. So knowing how hard it was to get Triple T1, we settle with Tier 3 Hybrid. Because Tier 3 Hybrid is really... In the end, the damage difference is pretty low, and we know that people would still want to mirror it. So you can see how big of a difference it was in the amount of currency you would have to spend. Now, before Harvest League, it was impossible to craft any of these bows, and or it's impossible to get Triple T1 prefix easily. So this item is kind of a byproduct of how overpowered Harvest League was, in that it allowed us to get two T1 prefixes and one Tier 3 hybrid while being able to get these suffixes. Now mention how I say that triple T1 prefixes are super hard to get because that is the main part of the story about why this bow ended up costing 100 meters to make. Now this bow in this version, we'll, we'll call this version 1 onslaught branch, only cost probably not that much to make after we got the base, probably like 150 exalts to get tier 3 hybrid. And that's because we settled for tier 3 hybrid. Regardless, it still received over 100 plus copies throughout Harvest League and was by far the most mirrored item. So Harvest League ended and we're like, the bow is not perfect, like it was not perfectly divine. So we decided, oh, we have a lot of randomized fist seeds because at the same time we were trying to go for a perfect foil. 
So we came up with Onslaught Branch version 2, and this is a version of it on standard. If you look at the two bows, the only difference is the top end is 78 now instead of 77, and it's, the top end is 647 instead of 644. So it's kind of funny that someone actually mirrored the version 2. Because the version 2 actually only briefly existed for not too long. So after Harvest League, we had Delirium or Heist League. And in Heist League, it introduced weapon enchantments. And weapon enchantments add random modifiers like this one. Physical modifiers have 8% increased effect. There's also another one that physical modifiers have 15% increased effect at the cost of having no sockets. So in Heist League, we decided to play Hardcore. And in Hardcore, we were ripping over the Tempering Orbs on the standard to put on the bow. And again, we got very lucky. Uh, we hit the Tempering Orb within 10, I think 10 Tempering Orbs to hit this. And this resulted in a lot more copies. So this would be pretty much Onslaught Branch version 3. Again, it's still P1 plus P3, meaning it's tier 3 hybrid. Now we move on into Ritual League. Like the item was just sitting in standard, getting a co few copies here and there. Nowhere near as much as before. And during Ritual League, something happened. At the end of the Ritual League, the community got super mad and butthurt over Harvest Crafting Manifesto when they said you could no longer use Remove and Adds on influence items. In fact, Anoles were just completely removed from the game completely. So now, someone knew about this item in Standard on the TFT Discord and they wanted to fix it because they knew it was the best base possible, but they knew that once Harvest was gone, the chances of this item ever having triple T1 prefixes was going to be a pipe dream. So they negotiated with us and bought the bow for 12 mirrors and that is where the luck ends and turns into a nightmare. So at this point, he tried to remove and add Fizz and trying to hit off the hybrid, the tier 3 hybrid and getting the tier 1 hybrid. And the tier 3 hybrid was not removed, the flaring was not removed, instead Merciless was removed and he got Mana Leech instead which started him off on this unfortunate journey. So the first step in making the new bow was that the bow was pretty much dead. So he had to start all over from scratch. And the best way to do it is to try to start with Merciless and Dictators. So tier 1 percent fizz and tier 1 hybrid. Uh, the problem was that he got Merciless and um, Dictators, but there was a prefix and extra suffix on it. So now there's this really expensive step where he was trying to annul off the prefix and suffix so that it was just a merciless dictator's clean base. Now he used 10 Eternals on this to try to hit it off. And each one of those Eternal clicks is 1000 Exalts in Standard. And there are not very many Eternal Orbs left. So right now he's just getting like pretty unlucky as he takes it off. So in the end, you want to start the craft with tier 1% fizz and tier 1 hybrid fizz so it would just be 268% increased fizz damage with no uh, flat fizz or accuracy or um, life gain on hit by attacks now this step is pretty uh, sad to see and it's just sad to see so many eternal orbs being deleted and here it is this is the final product took a lot more eternal orbs than expected and it's, right now it's tier 1% fizz and tier 1 hybrid now once you get the bow as a clean base, the next step is to do the suffixes. The suffixes, they used a really smart method which was doing prefixes. Oh wait, they first chose a name with prefixes and suffixes cannot be changed by crafting both of them in a Chaos Orb. And most people don't know, when you Chaos Orb an item, the name changes. So you can actually hand pick your item for a mere item for the name. So they chose Dragon Thunder because I guess it sounds very cool and dragons are awesome. So now they use Remove and Add Speed to get a tier 1% speed. Oh yeah, before this step they also, this is actually a very cool thing they did. They used uh, Reforge an item and add at least one attack modifier. So they... They try to use this to get plus 1 or plus 2 arrows. And then they use another one with prefixes cannot be chained, reforge an item, being much more likely to receive the same modifier types. And this makes it up quite easy to get plus two arrow mods. I actually had no idea about this method and this would have made it a lot faster. 
for us to make the bow. Originally, now comes the last step as the person said. He has to eternal the item and craft percent fizz damage leads this mana suffix to block the prefix equivalent of the mod from rolling. And then spam augment fizz to try to get flaring. So they're pretty much at this step. So say like the item is already pretty much crafted out. So he has the two tier 1 um, percent and tier 1 hybrid. Now he also has plus 2 additional arrow done and he also has 19% attack speed so now you just want to aug fizz and aug fizz pretty much means and then he crafts on mana leech so you go here and you can actually craft on mana leech which is a suffix weirdly enough okay so I don't know why it won't let me so he wants to add to craft that as a suffix and then he aug fizz so he aug fizz and tries to hit flaring and this step Flaring is not like a super low weighting, like Merciless or something, so it's not the worst step in the world. So if you don't get that, so you're guaranteed like a hybrid or life leech. If you get life leech, then you can just remove life and aug fizz again. And if you get a hybrid, or and then if you get a low flat fizz, then you can just remove and add fizz and hope that you take away the flat fizz and get flaring. So according to this person, he expected to, to take 23 Eternals because there's a lot of fail safes in that you have many chances because you can remove life to get rid of the life leech. But in the end, he ended up using 56 Eternals on the step to hit flaring and that is just a shame. Because now this item ends up looking like this. I mean, afterwards he crafted crit chance and then he divined it. I mean, the, all the bulk in the cost was using the Eternal Orbs to fish for flaring. So this one increase in mods from tier 3 to tier 1 hybrid ended up costing the person pretty much close to, I mean you list out all the costs, 86 mirrors. So in the end, what was the total cost of the craft? He bought it for 12 mirrors for the base, he spent 66 eternal orbs, he bought 1000 imprint beasts for 1400 exalts, 1200 divines for 181 exalts to get a perfectly divine. Spent 16 exalts naming the bow. 1225 exalts for white sockets and speed crafts. And then 1000 exalts for various bench mods and buying the fish crafts. So, total cost of this item was 86 mirrors. Now, will this item ever make back its money? Probably. And maybe it would need to get mirrored around at a hundred times because the mirror fee I think is like half a mirror or something. But in the end, this bow will probably not be beat until Path of Exile 2 unless they somehow re add Harvest back into the game. The only way I could ever see this bow being beat is if someone got tier 1 flat fizz and got attack speed, and then they somehow got lucky with Jagged Fossil spamming, but probably not possible. But you never know. So overall, this is the most expensive item ever crafted in Path of Exile history, around 100 mirrors. Before, I think this item used to hold the crown, but it was like estimated around 50 mirrors or so. And hopefully the owner who made this bow can make back the money, but I just found it interesting to share this whole story. And since I owned the Onslaught branch originally, I just wanted to... Probably enlighten people about the crafting process and how the crafting process for a mirror item doesn't stop when the league ends and that's why you need standard currency if you actually wanted to finish off an item like this. But that's why we sold off the item because we don't really play standard and our currency was pretty much just accumulating there from all the mirror fees so we just cashed out. Anyhow everyone, thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned a little bit and this item is actually quite insane. I never thought you can see three additional arrows on a bow. Be sure to like and subscribe and catch me on Twitch. I'll be streaming the new Ultimatum League and maybe we can make a new mirror item and hopefully not beat this item's value in cost because this item was just an unlucky story. It started off lucky, ended up unlucky, but that's just how some things are. And thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe and see you next time.